This is the intercom. I figure I'll give you a briefing on that. The pilots, uh, phone jacks go in these two, passengers go in these two. There's no on and off switch on this. When the pilot plugs in his phone jacks, that starts the intercom on. There's a red dot. I don't know if you can see it from there, but right here there's a kind of a pink dot I put on there, and I turn it to where this lines up with the pink dot, and that kind of set the volume right for when I was making those videos. I decided that was the best place to have it. If you're plugging in a recorder, which was what I was doing, recording the sound separately, that's why my mouth and my gestures don't mount, match the sign, uh, or the sound, it doesn't match the sound. Uh, that's partially because I have a lot of trouble editing and they get all chopped up. But you plug it in right here. This is the 1 8 inch phone jack goes in there to go to your recorder, which I just used a little small recorder on there. This will come on whenever you're transmitting. This is the volume here and this is the, what this pink dot is a squelch. And if I set it right there, that seemed to where it worked best for me. This turns the volume up and down. The rear seat passenger can reach this and adjust his volume for whatever he wants. Uh, anyways, that's how this works. But the main thing I wanted to show you was this right here. There's a screw here. And you take that little plastic screw loose. And you can pull out this plastic cover, which covers two 9-volt batteries in here. And that's what powers of the thing. Uh, the batteries aren't drained as long as you pull out your headset it'll run forever. But <clears throat> these batteries in here you gotta change them. I change them maybe once a year but it's a 9 volt battery. I usually get a little screwdriver and uh, try to unsnap these terminals here which should come off there to get the battery out. Now you can test that battery to see if it's good by touching it to your tongue. That one's still good. Like I say, I put new batteries in but the guys never went anywhere with it. So I'm going to assume the other one's good too. Then I think I'll just put it back to, together since this battery is good. So you can see what I'm doing. This is where this radio goes in there. It's a handheld radio. Not a very expensive one but it all sounds good. It works real well. Transmit 80 miles, no no problem if you're both in the air. If you're on the ground, you might hear somebody in the air coming at you from, I'll say, four miles out. You know, if you're sitting on the runway, this will probably hear somebody that's in the air four miles away. Uh, it's, pl it's plugged into the cigarette lighter for power. So whenever you hit the master switch, the radio will come on. You can set the frequencies here. There's a book about the radio in there that'll tell you how to do that. There's a memory in it, and your most frequent frequencies, I think it holds 20. And you can just go up and down the list with these buttons here. Uh, you can also set it to automatically scan and stuff like that. But what I wanted to tell you about, if I just run it, uh, if you want to plug in the intercom, you plug these plugs in here, in these two loose wires here. That goes to the intercom. If you don't want to use the intercom, which if you're flying by yourself, most of the time you don't, you plug your headset in here. Don't plug it in here, you plug it in here because you don't need to use the intercom and just run down the batteries for nothing. So you plug your headset into these. So if you want to use intercom, you got a passenger, you unplug your headset, plug these two wires that are laying here into that box. And you put your pilot's headset in here and the passenger headset in there. I don't know if you can see that, but this control panel here is basically for your engine and different controls, switches and whatnot for the electric system. This is the exhaust gas temperature. And there's another one here. There's two of them for each, one for each cylinder. This kind of tells you if there's something changed about your mixture. Uh, I have a red line here where it's not supposed to go hotter than that. It's too lean if it goes over that red mark. In general it doesn't go anywhere near that. It runs around a thousand to maybe eleven hundred is about as high as that goes. 
but that's uh, that's your exhaust gas temperature. Now then, this is an hour meter. Uh, these right here are switches. One of them is a fuel pump. The fuel pump is only used for pumping fuel from the little football tanks and puts it in the main tank, which is this valve up here under the root tube. And this is the fuel pump that you're turning on and off right here. But this valve, you turn it this way to pump out of the tank on this side, or this way to pump out of the tank on the other side. This right here is a handle that helps you get in and out of the plane. That's what that's for. Now then, this turns on and off the strobes. Usually I have that switch on because it goes off with the master switch, which is on this end. And there's no danger of leaving this thing set in the hangar and having the master switch on if the strobe is on, because you'll see that strobe blinking on there. This is the heat. When you turn this switch on, it turns on a heater, which is the computer fans. I think I showed you that thing. The, it's a just a heater core off of a car. It blows heat to the front and back seats and recirculates the air over and over again. So it heats the inside of the plane pretty good, the, the heat. And this is your ignition. You, you'd have to you, you can turn both of those off or one at a time. When you stop the plane, they both have to be off. But you can check your mags. If, if both of them are on and the plane's running, you can, before you take off, you turn one off, see if the engine quits. If it doesn't, you're okay. Turn the other one off, the engine doesn't quit, you're okay. Both mags are working, and it would be safe to take off. Both sets of spark plugs and coils are working. This is the master switch, which pretty much stops anything from working on here. And this right here is the button that honks the horn. The horn's attached to the landing gear. I think that tells you everything you need to know about it. I also have this thing here, which is attached. This is the misery meter, I call this. This tells you inside temperature and outside temperature so you know just how uncomfortable you are. It has a battery in it that you have to change every so often and apparently since it's not working the battery's dead but it has been setting for two years not doing anything except measuring the temperature in the hangar. So I'll put a new battery in there.